In today's video, we'll take a look at serialization. Serialization is really the process of taking something that is in memory, so basically the value of a variable, of a, of a variable that is a struct, that is a class or whatever, uh, saving it to a file in a certain format and using the same format to be able to uh, read that data and put it back into a variable. Okay, so this is what we're going to do here. First, let's have some data. Let's create a structure that we want to write to the file. Here we're going to create a struct or type that struct, let's say, a uh, person. I just want a person. A person should have, uh, let's say, want a name. 20 characters should be enough for most people. Um, int age and then char gender here. So that's going to be either M or F. And of course here person to finish up the definition of our type. Now let's declare here a, a uh, person variable, person p1 equals, I'm going to actually initialize them like so. I'm going to say uh, p1, right? It's going to have the values that are uh, typed in here and in here. I'm going to type in the value for the name, right? So this is going to set the name uh, value from within the struct, which is, I think, pretty nice. And you can uh, set it using the equals sign, something that you uh usually cannot do with these types of strings okay and dot name equals let's say andrew why not uh age is i don't know 22 and gender is male okay so what we want to do is to save this to a file first let's open that file so that we are able to save it uh i'm gonna use f open underscore s for my program uh, you can use f open. It's more or less the same thing, except instead of passing in the first parameter that is the uh, the path to the file, you actually pass in here uh, a reference to where you want to save the file handler. But all in all, it's actually the same thing. So here I can say file. Uh, this is our file handler, and here I'm going to pass a reference to it, so double pointer to file. The file name, I'm going to call it people.people.dat, and we're going to open it with W+. This W+, I did talk about this in a previous video, which you can check up top. This W+, is basically a way of saying, open this file, but let me read and write to it, right? So it's going to allow me to do both, uh, both of these operations. Okay, so now that it's open, let's check if it actually is something. So if file is null, um, I'm just going to return one and that's going to be the end of it. So that's going to return out of the main function and it's going to be something, basically, if you return something different than zero, that means that it's an error code. So there's that. Next, let's try to write this uh, structure to the file. How do we do that? Well, there's a function called f printf. I'm going to use again underscore s here, but you can use just the normal one. First, we take in the stream, so the file. Then we take in a format. Now, the format, uh, it's like in printf, the same exact thing. That format, well, we should actually save it somewhere mm, sort of uh, in a variable, because if you want to serialize this, this struct in uh, many places, in your program, it's going to be very easy to change just how you're going to serialize it uh, in the file itself. So here I can say, or actually I'm going to say it above this uh, type def, const char pointer, let's call it something like uh, person format out, right? It'd be out because we're using it to print out to the file. And this guy is going to have the value. Well, it's going to be the format for that, uh, for this struct. And we can decide on whatever format we want. I'm just going to use a simple tuple with parentheses here. I'm going to say, well, first it's going to be the name, so percent %s, then a comma, then the age, percent %d, then a comma, and then the gender, so percent %c. And that's it. And the backslash n at the end, just so that we have a uh, simple, a clean line here and we don't add uh, many structures on the same line. Okay, next, we need to use this. So I'm going to say uh, person format out, 
Then we have to pass in the parameters in the order that we have passed in in uh, here, of course. So we're going to say first p1.name, p1.age, and p1.gender. Okay, that's the first step. So now that we written it to the file, we can also read it. Um, but due to the fact that we're using W+, we have to first move the cursor. So the cursor, the cursor is sort of a position at which it should read or write or write uh, into a file, right? And right now, our position, our cursor is not at position zero. It wrote some uh, characters and it's at position something like 26, I believe, or something like that. So due to that, we have to change it back to zero so that we can read the same line that we wrote here. To do that, we just have to say f seek file. So we want to f seek the file. We want to set offset to zero and the origin to be seek set. That says to the beginning and the difference between the beginning and where we want it to set is zero. So we want to set it at the beginning. So next, let's deserialize this data, right? So we want to get this data and store it inside another variable. So I'm going to define first here a person p2 and uh, this is where we want to save the data right and if i want to read i have to use a scanf function at least if i want to read using a format string some people don't actually recommend using scanf but for this in this situation i think it's uh, a very fit solution for it because it takes in a, a string format that you can then modify it and it's much easier to deserialize data rather than parsing it with, uh, for example, str tokenizer. Okay, so I'm gonna use fscanf, I'm gonna use underscore s because the compiler does uh, sort of force me, or it just warns me that uh, I should use the underscore s version of it. And if you're using an, uh, a modern compiler, you should be able to do so. Otherwise, just use fscanf. They are almost the same. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the difference. Um, so here again, we pass in first the file, the file handler. Then we're gonna have to define another format, right? So similar to this, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. And it's gonna be person format in and uh, percent %s is not quite right because percent %s in a scanf situation, what percent %s does is uh, basically tell scanf to read as many characters as it can until it hits a white space, right? But we don't actually want to read uh, until the white space, we want to read until the comma, right? We want to read everything before the first comma that is in the file. So what we're gonna do is just say, instead of percent s, read all the characters except the comma, like this. So this is a sort of percent s that specified what types of characters to read. And here I just specified that uh, it should not read a comma and the rest are fine so percent d and percent c should work fine and in this case we don't really need a backslash n but we could actually add a backslash n there so file then the person format in next up is the parameter so we need again all these parameters right so we can technically copy and paste this but be careful because scanf uh, expects addresses right so p1.name well that is already an address it's an array but it evaluates to the first character of that array to the address of the first character to that array more specifically and that is correct already we don't need to get the address of that that's evaluated p1.age is just an int so we need to get the address of that p1.gender same thing is just a char we get the address of that and one more thing aside from the semicolon one more thing here uh with the underscore s with the safer versions of these scanf functions, you actually have to pass in the number of characters you have allocated for every, st every string you pass in here. So I can take a look at this call and the only string that I passed in here, the only string as a parameter to the format string, except the format string itself, of course, is p1.name, right? So we have to pass in after it, the number of characters that I have allocated. And that is actually 20, right? I have allocated 20 characters for it. <laughs> and of course I did notice a, a 
mistake here. Instead of P1, we want to save into P2 that we have defined here. Notice that I don't initialize this guy, but it's actually uh, allocated. So the memory for it is actually allocated on the stack automatically. So is the uh, char array, the int, the gender. It has already space allocated for it. I just have to use it. So I'm gonna use it here, of course, saying p2.name, not p1.name, and same thing for the rest. And now if I add a breakpoint here, and if I launch this, you're gonna notice down here that p1 does have the name uh, Andrew. This is actually age uh, 22, I believe, because it's 16, but in hexadecimal, and this is just the character M. And same for p2, as you can see here, uh, the name is Andrew, again, 22 and M for the gender. So that worked nicely. And the nice part about this is you can actually change the serialization. So you only have to change this part to basically set the serialization setup for it. But now if I continue this program and finish, let it execute completely, I can take a look at the file here, people.dat, and you can see that I have the uh, the structure saved there in a readable manner. So not only did I serialize it in a way that the computer can read it, but also in a way that uh, humans can read it, which is pretty nice. You can also serialize it in a way that humans cannot read it, that's fine, uh, but this is much uh, nicer, I think. Now, uh, one more thing we can change here is, for example, if we want to serialize this as JSON, instead of just uh, our own uh, strange serialization method, we can actually do that. So let's go. So as you can see, I changed here the format. So basically I just added everything that there should be for a JSON, except there's one single mistake. That is, uh, this specifier is now incorrect because, well, uh, JSON, usually specifies strings in between double quotes. So our string, our actual value is gonna have at the end a double quote here, not a comma as we had before. So I'm gonna have to change this to a not double quote. I'm gonna have to actually say backslash double quote because I want to escape it so it doesn't end my actual string here. So now if I try to launch this, we should see that yes, in fact, P2 actually got the values of P1. So we have Andrew, we have 22, and we have M as we had before. And if we let it continue and reopen the file here, we can see that the file has saved in a uh, JSON format. So this can technically be read by, uh, you can actually feed this to JavaScript and it's gonna actually automatically uh, interpret this as a JavaScript object, which is, I think, very nice. And you can really expand on this as much as you want. Here I have changed it so that uh, it exports it to a more nicely formatted JSON file. So if I run this, it's gonna finish executing. And if I open the file itself, it's gonna actually have a nicely formatted JSON file with like every property on a line of its own, right? So I just, basically I just added some backslash n's and backslash t's. So that's a new line and backslash t is a tab, if you didn't know. And uh, yeah, this is very simple, I think, to serialize a file. All you have to do is just use these formatters or format strings in a manner that uh, makes the string look uh, nice. And you just have to sort of match the input with the output format, but not one-to-one. -one. As you can see here, I had to use this format for this for the name, but I had to only use percent %s for the name of the person when printing out to the file, right? So there are small differences, but if you keep them neatly together, it should be fine. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope this was useful. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care, bye.